Hello and welcome to Transform Today, a place where I hope we can have a honest conversation and uh, do a conversation about whatever interests you and maybe some other things too. So why don't we get to it? Um, so how you been keeping? How are things going with you these days? Are you managing okay or are you struggling with things? Well, we'll get to that uh, question because those are the questions I've had to face myself over the last uh, little while and I, I do want to share a few things about that. But also, this has also been a time for people uh, to take on new hobbies. We talked about hobbies before a couple videos ago. Um, but another, another thing that I'm doing is discovering some joys that I used to have years ago. And uh, one of them is photography. Now, I want to tell you that cameras have come a long way since I got my first single lens reflex camera, which was a Pentax many, many years ago. One of the things that have happened because of the, of the virus is everything's gone online. And the work that I do as a pastor and even as a part-time military chaplain, all of that's pretty well gone online at this time. Um, so I ended up getting a new DSLR, digital single lens reflex camera. This is the Canon Rebel, uh, Canon EOS Rebel SL3. Um, I'm not much of a photographer, obviously, because I haven't done it in many years, but this is basically an entry level camera for a photographer. But it also does videos, and you're probably wondering what this thing on top is. Obviously, it's a, a microphone boom, a uh, microphone. And uh, I am experimenting right now, learning about videos uh, with this camera. I've got a tripod, got a remote control, uh, you name it. I put it all together. And now I'm just experimenting or actually learning how to do a video, how to use the Bluetooth, how to use the Wi-Fi connection, how to, how to sync that with my computer here, my laptop that I'm doing this video on right now. So I've got some other, like I said, accessories, a tripod, I've got some uh, external lighting equipment. Uh, it's really basic stuff that I have that I've learned by uh, uh, going on YouTube and just uh, watching some uh, <clears throat> some uh, YouTube uh, videos on photography, on video making, editing, you name it. So it's been a lot of stuff I've been learning. It's just kind of a new thing for me. I'm actually, it's keeping me uh, focused and helping me to deal with what the questions I've asked you already, how you've been doing, how you've been handling things um, in this uh, interesting time, to say the least, that we're living in. So this is a, a Canon EOS uh, Rebel SL3 with a ceremonic boom mic. So get to the subject that I want to share this morning really is, is about stress. It's one of the things that I've been finding uh, in the role that I have as a pastor and, and uh, well, I have a grandfather, but certainly in the role that I am now, I'm finding that my, my emotions sometimes can uh, become burdened. My, my mental health has taken a bit of a hit on this. So, so I want to talk about stress. Um, um, the stuff I want to talk about today, I, I really want to give credit where credit's due. It's from a uh, webpage called the Institute for Faith, Works, and Economics. And they have an article in there on stress. I will uh, attach the, uh, the, uh, the link to that website in the description comments. <clears throat> so when we get really stressed out, when stress starts to build in our, in our lives, uh, and it can do so very quickly sometimes. It, it really puts a great uh, demand on our resources, our energy, our emotions, and our intellect. And it affects us in many different ways. It affects us uh, physically, it affects us spiritually, it affects us uh, cognitively, that's in our, our minds, and it affects us uh, emotionally. And, and this is something that we need to be aware of. I, I think 
Uh, there are a lot of positives that we we come we learn from stress, new coping skills and stuff like that. But with this uh, virus over the last four months that has impacted pretty well the whole world, um, it's it's brought a lot of extra stress in people's lives. People's people's livelihood have been affected. People's health have been affected, not just from the virus, but from all the other things that, that have happened alongside it. And so this is, I think, a good conversation to have here for a few minutes. I think we really need to be honest with ourselves. You know, uh, I was really busy for the first month or so learning a lot of stuff. I'm still learning a lot of things about, like I said, videoing and editing and uh, lighting and equipment and and even just where I'm, where we're going forward in ministry here. So um, uh, we just sometimes need to stop. You know, and take a good, a good reflection uh, inward of our, of our lives and the things that are causing stress in our lives. And because there could be a health issue, there could be a relationship issue, it could be finances, like I've already mentioned, it could be family, it could be, could be works, work issues, it could be whatever it is uh, uh, that can impact your stress and anxiety in your life a trauma that you've recently uh, experienced. But it does take a toll on the whole person. We live in a weird, weird society and culture that sort of breaks the person down into bits. And that's not the way God created us. He created us as a whole person, a mind, a spirit, a body. We're not fragmented. We, we do that to ourselves. And the culture has a way of doing that too, by fragmenting our, our time and our space. So um, this particular website gives us uh, gave, gives us five um, things that we can do uh, to help our, help us during the stressful times or when our stress levels get to manage our stress level. Put it that way. Now, for those of you who are listening to this that are not from a Christian worldview, I totally understand that this this might not be applicable to you. Not all of it, for sure. But uh, uh, I would just uh, ask you to bear in mind that uh, even if you're not from the Christian worldview, you are a spiritual person. We're all spiritual persons, and, and this might be helpful for you. So st stress does take a, a toll on, on the whole person, like I said. It can, it can actually derail our relationship with God. And uh, it can derail our relationship as it derails our relationship with our workspace and our family and even uh, our neighbors. And friends, so uh, these five things that I want to share with you quickly here um, will be things that we can do to help manage our stress levels in our lives. Well, the first one is worship. One of the things that happens when you get really stressed out and anxious is that it, we can blame God. People do that. And if we're honest with each other, I think we've all done some of that sometime in our life. Uh, whether we've done it... Uh, Verbally or internally, it doesn't matter. Now, sometimes we blame God when the stress levels get so high and things happen so hard, uh, often, maybe we feel like it's just piling up on us. And so it becomes hard to worship God. But that's, that's the thing, is we need to worship God. So when we do worship God, when we focus on God, it takes us away from our uh, problems and our issues and Puts it where it belongs, on God. Not in a blaming way, but on an infinite, all-powerful, sovereign God. And if we don't have words, I mean, you know, we can use the Bible, we can use the text itself to uh, just be the words for us, for how we feel. And I'll be sharing a little bit of that from one of the Psalms that I read uh, a few days ago. Um, second thing we can do is we can pray. Now, obviously, it's a no-brainer, right? Well, it's easier said than done sometimes, especially when our stress levels are high. You know, I've noticed myself over the last few weeks, as I've not been dealing with my stress properly or looking at it and examining myself on a continual basis, on a, on a, on a, on a continual basis, I've noticed that, you know, I have a hard time praying sometimes, and, and I needed to address that, and I did that in the last few days. Uh, prayer requires us to focus on God. 
That's really what we need to do. We need to pray to God. We need to focus on God. And we don't have to be wordy. We don't have to do anything. You just have to pray. That we should pray. You should say, have to pray. We should pray. Um, and that will help us handle our stress. Third point is ask for help. In this individualistic society that we have been raised up in, um, we can do things on our own. We can pull our bootstraps up, per se, and we can muster all the strength and we can do it all on our own. Well, that's not necessarily a good idea. And uh, uh, we need to ask for help. And stress is a signal, maybe, that we need, that we need to look at. It's a signal that we are probably overloaded. We have too much going on. And for everybody, that might be different. We have too much to deal with. And uh, it's really a reminder that we are finite. We're not, we're not infinite. Uh, and that, we're our, that we are fallible. That we are fallible people. And it's time maybe to reach out to family or friends or co-workers or whoever in your community that can that, uh, that you can reach out to and share what's going on in your life, a trusted person. For those who are going through an acute um, um, uh, physical, emotional, or whatever stress uh, from any trauma, it's really important that you seek help immediately. You don't let that be the norm for you. You need to seek help immediately. Uh, fourth point is uh, seek community. Now, this is really important for for certainly the Christian worldview. For the Christian person, is to, is a, is to have community. Now, we haven't been able to do that. We haven't been able to meet weekly. Now, that's starting to soften a little bit here in Alberta, and people are meeting and in places. It's just going to look different. It's going to be different. It's going to be a little awkward, maybe. It's not what we're used to. Um, Things are going to be put into place there that are, you know, for our safety and our and for the health of the community, and, and those are totally understandable, and it's not a bad thing. But to see community, one of the things that happens when we get stressed, uh, stressed out too much, is we become isolated. We become inward focused, and it's not it's natural. It's not it's not a it's just what happens sometimes, and and the whole idea. And what the Bible teaches us about the family of God is we're there to support each other, to encourage each other. And that's one of the areas that I've been struggling with as a pastor. Um, not to make any judgments on my church, because that's not the point here. The point is sometimes I feel like I'm, it's pretty lonely. Um, I didn't realize that I, I am an introvert for the most part, but I didn't realize how I didn't realize that I was a social introvert, if that makes sense. Maybe another pastor would understand what I'm talking about. Um, maybe you understand what I'm talking about. And I've been struggling with that part. This idea of doing videos, talking basically to myself. Uh, well, that's not exactly what I'm doing this for. But, um, I think you get the point. So that's one of the areas that I've been struggling with. This really brought a little more stress in my life. I can't go visit people in the hospital like they used to or I can't go. Uh, do this, I can't do that because of all the issues. And I totally understand it and I know why it's happening. But it still adds stress. But seeking community, if you're stressed out, seek community. You can, you can do it all sorts of ways. You can um, text people, you can phone people, you can do well, people, you know, in Zoom meetings or other kind of online meetings, Instagram, Messenger, you name it. You know, I've talked to my family, uh, my sisters via Messenger, you know. Face to face, basically that way. I know it's not the same, uh, but uh, it, it's a place that where you can go and share your uh, lives together, and, and, and it will help you de-stress. Um, and last point: uh, examine what's on your plate. What's on the things that you do? I know I've talked to people that you know a lot of things that they used to do, well, they're not doing anymore, and, and that makes sense. I get that. I understand that. But when, and when you're stressed out, when you're feeling the stress, when things are starting to happen to break down in you, mentally or physically or whatever, in your life, you need to examine what you're doing. And uh, maybe it's time to take a good, a good examination and to uh, maybe start some new boundaries. You know, um, it's been said that no is a complete sentence. That's what it is. 
No is a complete sentence. Just like yes is a complete sentence. Um, so say no maybe. Maybe it's time to take a break. Maybe it's time to do something different. I don't know what your situation is. So there's the there's those five points from Institute from Faith, Works, and Economics. Uh, uh, worship, pray, ask for help, uh, seek community, even in the midst of all that's going on now, we can have some sort of community and examine your your workload, your, your plate, whatever you're doing. So anyways, that's all I wanted to share with you today. Uh, thank you for being here with me. Um, add your comments to the comments uh, section of the video, I will respond. Um, and thank you for, for the time that you've taken to watch this and uh, just have a great day. Shalom.